I got my black belt and then I was like, I can help others. And then I see, I was thinking, what type of people should I help out? And I was like, kids? No, there's a lot of stuff for kids out there. And then I was like, hmm, the, the elderly. I was like, my grandma, she doesn't get a lot of, like a lot of attention because she lives by herself. And I was like, maybe other grandmas feel the exact same way. And I know my grandma loves when I come and hang out with her. So why not come out and hang out with other grandmas? And now I had a, I had a meeting with the director of the nursing home and she loved the idea. She didn't even come to, the, that's how confident she was in me. She didn't even come to the first class because she knew that I was gonna take care of the seniors and I hit it off from there. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Linda Ulrich, founder of the Goodness Exchange and host of the Conspiracy of Goodness podcast. On this podcast, you're going to hear from countless innovators around the world, countless social entrepreneurs, countless really good people who are changing the future for us all in some way. They've got ideas, they've got projects that we should be hearing about on the news every day, just as much as the doom and gloom. But for some reason, that version of reality, that balanced view of what's happening in the world is not reaching us. But here on this podcast, you're gonna not only hear these folks' stories, but you're gonna find ways in your own life to use the lessons they're sharing with us. These folks that I'm talking to on the Conspiracy of Goodness are leading an enormous wave of goodness and progress happening in the world that almost no one knows about. But if you join us here, you will have the edge on, um, on this opening of a new era, and you will find a spring in your step again. So today's guest is just an amazing uh, person. He made my heart soar to talk with him. This is a rebroadcast of an interview with a 16-year-old, Jeffrey Wall Jr. Jeffrey is, is like so many millions of other young people that we're just not hearing enough about. He asked himself one day what he could do in his community to make the world a better place for others. And he had a great story about his grandmother. And in the end, he took this mastery of karate to the nursing homes in his area. And he formed a, a nonprofit at age 16 that is teaching folks in nursing homes karate, and more importantly, the self-confidence and the, and the, um, and the personal uh, growth that it that that exercise and being with others and pride in place can can bring us all, no matter our age. So you've just got to hear Jeffrey talk about how he became such a um, such a good, caring person. That's good for us to understand about what's out there in the world. We're hearing a lot about the troubled youth in the world. In fact, that's all we ever hear. But there are millions like Jeffrey. And once you hear him talk, you will start to recognize that they are all around you too. So enjoy this interview with Jeffrey Wall from a year ago, because it can restore our faith in what's possible for us all. And in the end, we'll talk a little bit more about expanding that this view, this this view of possibility, um, in many many other ways. Take it away, Jeffrey. Thanks so much for joining us. Jeff, welcome. Tell us what you've been up to, because this is going to be an amazing conversation. But I don't want to get anything wrong. <laughs> yes. Hi, I'm Jeffrey. Jeffrey Wall. You guys can just call me Jeff. And I started the nonprofit organization, <laughs> Golden Age Karate. So yes, you can just say organization. And it's where I travel to nursing homes and I hold karate classes with senior citizens. So we take it easy and do light exercises and some basic martial arts techniques. And at the end, they get to kick my butt. <laughs> so that's probably the most fun time for them, especially. <laughs> Yeah, I did see some amazing video when I was doing my homework for this this uh, this episode. Uh, we recently featured Jeffrey's work uh, at Ever Widening Circles in an article um, oh, early end of March, early April, uh, yeah. 2021, maybe just two two weeks ago or so. And we are my team at Ever Widening Circles was so impressed with uh, with your work and. The interaction they had with you that they said, Dr. Linda, you've just got to interview Jeff. He's got a message for the world that's so big and so important for our times. 
Thank you. So, <laughs> so here we are. Hey, um, I, I, as I said, I did some homework and I, and I just, I had two pages of notes of stuff that I wanted to ask you about. Yeah, sounds good. Let's get into okay. it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's get to it. So, so Jeff, one of the first videos that, um, that, that I, I saw, um, you said the first time you went to a dojo, um, they asked you to do some sort of a kick or you offered that. And the, the person at the, at the dojo knew instantly that you were in your zone of genius with this. Tell us about that moment. Cause I've got some questions about how that works and sometimes doesn't work in people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. So I was about six years old when I started and I just went up to the instructor. Right. And I bowed to him cause that's, he taught me how to do that right away. And then I don't know why or what got into me, but I just did a straight up axe kick all the way up and my leg was all into the sky. And I didn't even know I could do that because I've never tried that before. And then the instructor was like, yep, this is this is the one. <laughs> so this is this is something I've been watching. Um, you know, I've been a dentist for 30 years. Uh Jeff, and, and so, and I've been a different kind of dentist. I've been really deeply involved in the lives of our patients and, and really know people's arc of time. And I've seen this over and over um, in, in parenting and families is that sometimes a kid comes into the world with their own unique alchemy that's not related to our alchemy at all or anything we knew or, or anything we, we even valued up to that moment. It, were your family, was your family, do you come from people who were involved in martial arts? Not at all. Nobody in, that I know in my family did martial arts at all. Like, wow. even to this day, I still, well, actually, my cousins, my little cousins, they started martial arts, like, after they saw me doing, not, not, this was before Golden Age Karate and stuff, but Carson and Colin, my two cousins, they started martial arts after they saw me. I think I had my green belt at the time is when they started or red belt it was one of those two i can't remember exactly but they started doing it like right after they saw me but and you don't come from people. generations of people who did no. martial arts so know. so that's that's something um i like I, I i love to talk to families about the ones that embrace this little unique person that they've discovered has this whole talent for instance my husband was was captain of the basketball team at Kentucky and you know we did produce some very big children and they did play <laughs> basketball but what if one of them had really been into chess I often wonder you know what kind of parenting challenge that would have been tell me um in that light the kind of things that that seemed to work for you as far as um, the parenting that you got once this talent was discovered? So my parents have like always taught me that kindness rules everything. And so they and martial arts and the discipline I got out of martial arts was just amazing. So they was already like, okay, you gotta, you gotta do this. <laughs> and the, it's not even the self-defense part, but it's also the mental aspect the the confidence that it gives you just to walk around but you know that you, you even though that you know you can hurt somebody you still aren't just going around trying to hurt somebody like on purpose it's only for self-defense and so they've always just told instilled in me that just stay kind and people would just be nice back to you yeah so the, and that is a really big part of the whole uh, not perhaps not all martial arts but the kind of martial arts that you're doing is this um this self-confidence with self-control yes <laughs> right there's a whole bunch of respect and order and and other other things that are involved way before you ever get physical tell us a little bit more about that so the first thing you always do is you bow to your instructor so like that's already a sign of respect that you're already learning at such a young age because many of my stu or our students they start at like they're like seven like a lot of them are, started around my age or different ages like nine ten all those ages so that's still instilling in them like a respect level that you have for different people and that's like the first thing you learn is the discipline and just saying yes sir no sir yes ma'am no ma'am so like all that respect aspect is like the first thing you learn then you get into like the physical exercises the kicks the punches all that <laughs> 
but it's um but it's really about the self-discipline not to use the force and the power it's right it, that's like the last resort right yes like they said i think it was star wars and it's great with great power comes great responsibility <laughs> right exactly exactly yeah we because we had such giant kids you tell a great story or your mother does in one of the videos about when you were in third grade you you had to oh yeah i'll let you tell a story <laughs> so i think it was third it was yeah it was third grade one of my friends was getting picked on and then he, he pretty much called on me to come help him and save him. <laughs> so, and I was just like, I'm not a superhero, but I guess I'll help you out. <laughs> and Your mom just, got a call and she had to remind people that you were not <laughs> Batman. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get in trouble any, or anything because I just like stepped in and he like came at me and I was just like, uh -huh. okay, I had to discipline myself. But he never bullied anyone again, so that's okay. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, these are the these are the choices of our everyday life in the wider world too. You know, someone says something really off color when we're out to dinner. Do we do we say something back? Do we do we discipline ourselves to be kind and and kind of measure the situation? Like, tell us more about this kindness ethos. Because a lot of people might not think that that really blends with anything in the martial arts that's actually about fighting. So for me, if I was in that type of situation, like I would probably just like st try my best to ignore them. Unless they get physical, then you would have to defend yourself. But you just try to step away and not hang around people like that. So and just be kind to everyone because it's kind of hard to be really mean to want someone if they just keep being kind to you. So <laughs> it would just start getting really awkward and everybody around you is like, why, why are you trying at this point? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, it's interesting that you should put it that way because that, that's one of the things that um, that I'm recommending is that we that we curate our incoming, you know, curate the people that we have in our, our lives or curate the people that we follow on the internet. I mean, you know, we don't have to have the bullies and the yeah. The folks that are driving up the drama in our lives it's not useful like what does that get you except in a bad place and no one liking you just <laughs> it's not not smart it's it, well it's lovely that you don't um that you don't have this overwhelming urge to just please others and go with the flow it, especially with the kind of expertise that you've developed it, it, it's super so let's dive into this um this whole experience that you've had with elders because i really um i see an age coming where we are going to start uh, uh respecting our elders more than than we have in probably the last 50 years i hear this term coming up wise elders and um you know, it sounds like you've gotten a great appreciation for folks who have a lot of years under their belt. This, yeah. started, this started with your own grandmother, right? Yes, because I, I always, I was actually just over her house this weekend. Like, <laughs> so I always go over my grandma's house because she lives by herself. And like, I'm pretty much like one of the only people, me and my other cousins go over her house like all the time. But I normally go by myself. And just like hang with my grandma because it's for me it's like super fun i don't know why <laughs> i've just always had the urge can i go over my grammy's like that's what we call her grammy so i always just love going over her house oh great and she um and you kind of saw this as something that you could do to help her her fitness or her loneliness or where did you see um you see the the, the martial arts connecting with her or did you just learn that this was a thing by your time with her I learned that the loneliness is like real for them. And then I decided when I was 13 that I wanted to do something else and helpful. And then when I turned 14, I actually started Golden Age Karate, so. Amazing. Now, how did you get connected? So the big, give us the big picture of, um, of how you made this leap from hanging out with your grandma to, uh, to starting to interact with people in nursing homes and, and this older set? So I got my black belt and then I was like, I can help others. And then I see, I was thinking, what type of people should I help out? And I was like, kids? No, there's a lot of stuff for kids out there. 
And then I was like, hmm, the, the elderly. I was like, my grandma, she doesn't get a lot of, like, a lot of attention because she lives by herself. And I was like, maybe other grandmas feel the exact same way. And I know my grandma loves when I come and hang out with her. So why not come out and hang out with other grandmas? And now I had a, I had a meeting with the director of the nursing home and she loved the idea. She didn't even come to, the, that's how confident she was in me. She didn't even come to the first class because she knew that I was going to take care of the seniors. And I hit it off from there. <laughs> is such that you know i don't want to brush over that you know there's a lot that goes into that little part of your story first you had the where had to have the wherewithal to sort of i mean did you have to come up with sort of a pitch like how you were gonna talk to her about what you wanted to do then the the person at the nursing home whose approval you needed like how do you make that first meeting how do you have that conversation why didn't she and why did she think it was so such an obvious win yeah I, I like made it like a whole like the day before i made a whole game plan i was like pretty much what i was going to say i was pretty much scripted except like i just had it memorized <laughs> instead of like reading off something i went to work with your seniors and like i had to remember everything i was going to say and then i pre pretty much just sold it to her like how like i could tell her mood was changing throughout the thing like oh this might be pretty cool <laughs> so just had to sell it. Wow. Okay. So if you first you get through the gatekeeper, because th that's what we all have to do. I, I, I know a lot of people that listen to this podcast are doing what they can with what they have um, to give to the world, just like you and I both. Yeah. Um, so first you have this part, you have to get over that hump where you pitch the idea to others and they give you the thumbs up. So then what, I mean, how did you know anyone would show up and and what was the actual machinations of how your first class came to be? So like, I, I really didn't expect like too many people to come, but like it was a decent turnout for real. It was like eight people in my first class. So like, that was a lot of people to just be starting something and not really many people knowing anything about it. So like at first, the first class I got used to everybody just like asking their names, their backgrounds, and just basic things they can remember, like if they had any other martial arts experience. And then we started doing, we didn't have that much time left. So we had like 10 minutes or something. And then we started doing some kicks and punches with them and some stretches with them. And then the next class, that's when we had time to really get into the, the fun stuff as people like to call it. Like they got to, that class is when they got to punch me. So man, now it's just become an everyday thing for them. Beat up the teacher. <laughs> well, there's some great video of these classes online, and we'll we're we're really good about putting things like this in the show notes. So I'll make sure Brittany puts pretty much all the things that I looked at before I interviewed you here today. There's just some things that you can't help but smile. Yeah. Now, one of the things that you said. Um, it was maybe it was just a passing comment, but I, I'd love to get you to flesh it, flesh it out if you if you have more thoughts on it. You said that um, one of your goals was to give people the confidence, give them the confidence to step out of the house. Tell me what you mean by that. So for some of the seniors, like I'll give you an example. One of my seniors actually was heading out of a grocery store and she got her purse taken. And that was like, like a shocking moment for her. She pretty much couldn't, was just standing there, just standing still in shock. And now that she has come to the classes, she says she feels more confident and more ready to come outside the house if something like that happens. Like she's learned new techniques to do with like her keys or something, any handheld device she has, like a key, like she learned that she could put it in her hands and just punch away and they will get off off of her and hit for the eyes, the nose, the vital areas. Like she just has that confidence now, like, oh, I'm not scared to go out at night, go get my, my purse or something out of my car or go for a late night drive or something. They just now just felt ready and prepared for themselves. Isn't that lovely? I mean, what, what better thing to give other human beings than confidence? Right? <laughs> it, that is really, really lovely. Um, one of the things that uh, that you just um, reminded me about is this um, is the fact that one of the videos I saw it, it was done it had a back backdrop of a really popular pop song it was very good 
And I noticed that you had that all of the students were in the martial arts garb. The, the gi? The gi, yeah. And, you know, every one of them looked strong and confident. <laughs> You can it see was, their eyes. <laughs> yeah, it was so weird. Their posture was different. And um, <laughs> I don't know. Talk to me about that. Do you see that yourself? So I could definitely tell in like the beginning, like some of them just like didn't have the confidence all the way up there. They were slouching over, like a little bit shy. You could definitely tell that they weren't like used to doing anything. And then now I just see them walking like this, their chest all out, they're all ready. I'm like, oh, I see a little difference in you now. <laughs> Got a little bit of pep in their step. Like, it's just see the change, <laughs> just the growth <laughs> of somebody. Wow, that's just so great. Now, how did you know what to do and what not to do um, physically with people? You know, there, there's, I, I think there's quite a science around exercise. Um, for folks who have some years under their belt did you, did you do a little self-study so you knew what not to do and what to do and all that I, I i pretty much knew everything like i should and shouldn't do with them but i specifically asked each and every one of my students like if you had any problems like if you had just had knee surgery just had shoulder surgery anything like that so i can just work around it and just like help you like if we're doing an exercise with your arms and like one of your shoulders is hurt i'll have you put one of the shoulders down and still work one of those arms. But if you like switch arms, per se, and you, this one's the hurt one, I would just have you stay on this one and just keep working with that one. And same for the legs. So it's pretty easy. It was pretty easy to work around. It wasn't, that wasn't difficult. Well, you know, um, one of the things that you said in one of those videos was lovely. And I'm sure as you see this transformation over time with people, you said their excitement gets you excited. Yeah. What I mean by that is like if I see somebody have this is for this isn't just for like gold age karate this is for life in general like I feed off people's energy so like if I see someone happy I'm gonna be happy but like even if I see someone sad I'm still gonna be happy because that's gonna make them happy which is gonna make me happy and then we're all gonna be more happy than everyone's happy. <laughs> yeah, it's a light. It's a it's a mindset, isn't it? Yes, just walk around happiness. Everybody's just you're sad. Now you're happy. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have this poster in my office that says happiness is something you d decide upon ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> you don't just walk out the house, decide. Yeah. You, should, you do just walk out the house, decide, I'm going to make today better, make everybody feel better today. You, it doesn't start when you're just, are you there? Like, oh, I think I'm going to do that. Like in the middle of a conversation, oh, you said now you're happy like you gotta walk out it's like a mentality like like how kobe has his mamba mentality i got my happy mentality. <laughs> that's so great now do you think um do you think this is something that um that everybody would have access to or is it just something unique to your makeup so I, everyone has access to being happy like <laughs> if you just you got to bring it out of yourself and just tell yourself I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be great. I'm just just keep saying that to yourself over and over again and eventually it'll come to fruition. And 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 how do you um so it's so easy these days to to get into one of those downward sp spirals of overwhelm with the pandemic and the economy and all the strife and politics. Oh my gosh, it's just you know, it's so easy to go down the downward spiral. And it sounds like you pretty much um, pay attention to what you're giving your attention to. I wouldn't say I ignore the negativity because it's obviously still there and it's a pandemic. I kind of have to worry about that and wear my mask. But I don't, I don't think of it as like a deadly virus, you know? I just think of it as just, I have to be more careful in my everyday life. So I, I would still do the same thing, except I might put more hand sanitizer on, like after I do something. And like in a situation I more than likely wouldn't do, I'll wear my mask when I'm in a group of people. So I just think, of, I just w live my life how I would if it was no pandemic, but just still keeping precautions, even since it is a pandemic. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't sound like it. It's um, you've made it part of your fiber to be yeah. fearful. Never fear anything. That's pretty much my motto. <laughs> like, just, just uh, 
don't do anything like that would harm you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's okay to fear that. But like anything else, what doesn't kill you make you stronger. So <laughs> yeah, that's a lovely one, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I have so many th more things to ask you about. We're going to take a break and tell people about this uh, wonderful organization that we've recently launched, a place where people like you and I and other people who are trying to do good in the world can find each other and be multipliers for each other's goodness. So let's take a yeah. break and then we'll come back and we'll continue to talk. Hey, let's take a break in our conversation with Jeffrey Wall to talk about what more there is out there. Just like this story, there are millions of real stories out there of people who are doing good in the world. But you know how it's working right now. We're all walking around with our knuckles seeing us, the, the doom and gloom that the news is feeding us. And I'd like to offer an alternative because you know, we can't make great decisions about our kids' futures or, or our work options if we're fearful. We can't make good decisions about finding joy and taking a little bit of risk on, on finding wonder and beauty in our lives if all we think is that the world is a hopeless uh, place. So here's what I have for you. We have created a place at the Goodness Exchange where you can find countless articles, podcasts, recordings with people who are doing amazing things in the world. And they're sharing this in a way that um, we can all really connect with and feel confident about. I've been the uh, founder of the Goodness Exchange for 10 years, and we don't have any advertising. We have no political agenda. We don't go down rabbit holes to try and convince anyone of anything except that it is still an amazing world. And if you want to live with the spring in your step, join us at the Goodness Exchange. There, every day, you can work on your habits about seeing goodness all around you. And that's what it is. We've got to acknowledge that our brains are hardwired now, especially with the way news and social media is, to see only signs of danger and disorder. But we can change that. And at the Goodness Exchange, we will help you develop the habits of finding the world that you want to see out there in front of you. It's still there. We just need to help elevate it, bring it to the top. Join us at the Goodness Exchange and we can all do that together. Okay, we're back. Thank you so much um, for being here with us. So Jeff Wall is a, um, a martial artist who has decided to spend a, a good bit of his time helping others learn martial arts who are in their later years. And um, he started this whole adventure to share his gifts with folks in their, in their senior years when he was 14 years old. So now you're 16 with all this uh, two years under your belt at this. Are there, what, what do you aspire to next with this? Tell me, tell me what the future looks like for you. So what the future looks like for me is I'm definitely trying to expand this and make it First off, it's kind of already doing it, so I'm I'm okay with that. But it's trying to go global. I've already gotten different messages from people from Australia and like far, far places. That place I want to go to, I especially want to go to Australia. That'd be very fun. But <laughs> that's besides the point. But I've always been getting these messages like, "Oh, here from India, uh, supporting you from Australia, <laughs> supporting you from Africa." So like, it's already doing what the job is. Now I'm just trying to travel and spread the message even more to all of those places globally. That is so exciting. You know, um, it sounds like you're, you're just so in, in the service of others that, that the, the, this thing has taken on a life of its own sort of organically. Yeah, it's just naturally expanding. I didn't expect this to be, for it to be this good in like less than a year, like, like a few like months ago. Like when it was when it first hit a year, I was like, "Dang, I've already been on something that has a million plus views." <laughs> I was not, <laughs> I was not expecting that. I was like, "I mean, uh, I guess." <laughs> and now it's just normal. <laughs> well, you know that, and and that proves a point that we talk a lot about um, on ever widening circles. We like to say that goodness can be viral too. Yes, <laughs> you always see these negative things like people uh -huh. fighting people talking trash. You can always see those negative things on the internet, but it's always good to see something bright and positive. 
Lovely. So, and, and you've got some real, you know, this isn't all just sparkles and light. You've, you've had a few stories where people have actually physically improved their lot in life. Like you have a good story about a woman who had severe diabetes that was improved by, by this fitness, um, all this fitness and, and insight in her life. Tell us about that story. So we had one of my students, she had diabetes, right? And she was on four pills a day before, before all this Golden Age Karate. And then after Golden Age Karate and still going, she was down to one pill a day. So she's doing really good, keeping up with her cardio as well. Even outside, she's now starting to run around her building. So like she's just keeping in shape and now she's doing even better. Hopefully she gets off of it soon. Wow. So this is, is this the same person that walks miles a day? I mean, I'm sure you Actually, that's a different person. <laughs> oh, that's another person. That's another person, Miss Sandy. She gets on her treadmill and walks eight miles a day. I was like, I don't even do that. Miss, <laughs> like, I, I, I probably, even if you counted all my steps, I probably walk about mm, probably like five, six, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Well, you know, and this is, you know, you're you're proving a really important point to us all that, you know, if you have a passion, a hobby that you can share with even one other, this is a gift. Yeah. This is a gift. You, you, um, you know, it, you said in one of those videos that it makes you feel better to make others feel better. It's just like transfers back to what I said. When someone else, I, I feed off energy. If somebody's feeling happy, then I'm going to feel happy too. So, so like it just helps string it up. Everybody just all feel happy. All right. So this is what we need. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we need some of this happy. going on in this world. You yes. know, I, I, also, um, I also have this notion that, that you're part of a wave of people, um, your generation, millennial, your generation, that is looking at what they can do with what they have. And you really wanna be net contributors. Do you, think, do you think you're unusual for your generation? Because here's something I noticed in a few interviews. People always acted very surprised that you would be wanting to help others at the tender age of 15. And I, I found that to be a little bit insulting <laughs> because like, why wouldn't you want to help others? That should be the normal way it is. Yeah. I, I, it doesn't feel like abnormal for me, but like now that I see it, everybody's not like kind to everybody. So like everyone at my school, well, I wouldn't say everyone because I don't know everyone at my school, but the people I hang around, they're all nice to everybody. So I never really got to see anybody just like, blatantly being mean to someone mm -hmm. so like I'm already always used to just everyone being happy and nice to each other and there's a whole another side of the world that's just dark and just yeah. mean for no reason so I always I want to spread it to where everyone in the world is just nice and happy and just joyful towards each other and just make it a big chain reaction to everyone just being kind that is so lovely now um let's see I I had a question here um with the Golden Age uh, Karate nonprofit, can, can is there like a website? Can people actually look this up and help you? Can they donate to you? Can tell uh, how do people connect with you in in this and help? So I'm currently making a website right now, but how people can connect with me currently is definitely through my Instagram, and you can send. I think you can send DMs through YouTube as well, mm -hmm. but it's still at Golden Age Karate, and you can send donations through there as well but that's not the the name to do it i, I think it's jeff wall jeff that jeffrey dash wall dash 13 or something like that it's something complicated <laughs> <laughs> okay well by the time this this episode uh, airs it'll be about two weeks from now so <laughs> we can nail that down and we'll put it in the show notes okay that's that sounds good <laughs> because i know there will be people who want to do what they can to help you grow this movement Definitely, people already have been donating to me. That's how I got the uniforms. And I also, to show my thanks to them, I got their names and bordered into the, like the back of the gi. So like their names is always gonna be stuck with that student that they gave it to. 
and I raised enough money to get some uh, uniforms for all of my students. So that's just, oh. you can see that people actually want to help me with my, my organization. I tell you, it made all the difference in the world. There was something different about those folks once they put on the gi. They, I don't know, I, my brain <laughs> stopped focusing on how old anyone was. Yeah, it just looked like they were powerful and, and doing what they, they could do. Yeah, it looks like they turned into superheroes. Like every, everyone's just like, huh. now we got the gi on. They're like, yeah, you guys can't stop me. I know. It was so <laughs> awesome. It was so awesome. Okay, so as you go along here, do you have do you have a, a grand scheme of things? Have you have you had anybody approach you of starting another another offshoot of this in another community or anything? Do you want that? Um, I ha I want that, but people haven't been started doing that yet. Okay. That'll, that'll probably come later. <laughs> okay, because here's what I like to ask innovators like yourself. Um, I, I did an interview with a wonderful woman named um, uh, Principal Linda Clyde Wayman. It's in the podcast. It's one of the er earlier podcasts. And um, Principal Wayman was, is, the, is the woman who turned around the fourth most dangerous high school in America by loving kids. She has this amazing message. And um, I asked her uh, this, the question I'm gonna ask you, and somebody heard that podcast and her, her project got funded shortly afterwards. So I like to ask people doing the kinds of things you're doing, uh, you know, is there one thing that if it happened in the next couple of weeks would change everything, would help you launch, would help you get to the next level that you'd like to see this project. What do you need? Um, there's not one specific thing, but like anything helps, like the no donations, like if you send like a old uniform that you have, like, like anything would help, like it's not specific something that I need, but all, everything, that's that's it everything helps <laughs> okay like um like my kids all did uh, martial arts i've got their a lot of the belts and things like that i i just couldn't bear to part with if people have <laughs> these sort of things around that you would you would take those yes definitely oh be right there oh, i don't know if you can see but got my belts right here <laughs> okay all, all right great oh i think the hair might be in the way uh, no i can see and you're looking oh, you, oh, you know <laughs> Jeff, I feel bad. I, I noticed every other person gave you the opportunity to talk about all your your the actual um, competitions that you've done, and I haven't even said a word about it. Tell me, tell me about some of the competitions that you, that you've been in, and kind of that arc of competition, how that's gone for you. So I, I would probably say my favorite one first. So my favorite uh, tournament would probably be the Hall of Fame tournament, partially because I got inducted to the Hall of Fame when I was ten. So that, that probably helps a little bit. And it, that, that's like a yearly tournament it's in Indiana. So that's probably, that's, that's one of the farthest tournaments we go, we've gone to. Now, I'll say that Kentucky, that might've been farther than Indiana for us. Cause I live in Ohio. Okay. So it's, it's pretty far, but I got a few medals like right here. Here's one, just have one laying around. You got one on my door. And then you got a bunch of trophies back there and then a bunch of trophies in my actual room. So they're all just like spread out and I haven't lost. So they all say first place. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're kidding me. You haven't lost? No, in the sparring portion, no. I've lost in forms. Okay, so so you're a natural. This, and you know, <laughs> back to that point, I'm, I'm going through, I've got a question I want to ask you about something I came across. Um, and to that point, um, you know, you could be doing other things with your time, right? You could be continuing to compete and all that, um, but you're you're giving your time to others. Yes. Do you feel like uh, that's a, 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 a good trade-off? Yeah, I feel like it's a good trade-off because I can still manage my time and still yes. do Golden Age Karate because I play other sports as well. I'm a big basketball guy mm -hmm. and uh, my team, UCLA, we got knocked out by your dog, which is really sad. But I still, I still got time to manage and do everything still try to go to competitions when we have them and just stay on track and stay with my schoolwork. Nice. So um, 
I was looking at, uh, I came across this way of thinking about managing your time recently. And it was taken from a martial arts person who made a point to say um, that we can't always be fighting. He said that you have to have a part of your day that's active rest. Now that means you're really resting, yes. not <laughs> resting and scrolling through your Facebook page not resting and just watching whatever on Netflix, but truly resting. You said you have to have active rest. You have to have at least about five hours a day training. And then the fighting should be just a couple hours a day. Now he was using a metaphor for business. So the training part of this business, of course, is learning, learning about your customers, learning about your business, learning new skills and all that stuff. Um, and, and, and he was making the point that most of us usually spend all our day fighting. <laughs> okay. I wanna get your take on this, the, these parts of the equation. So do you, do, you, do you actively rest? Like, what do you do? Are you into anything else? You, you just told us you're into basketball and so forth, but um, you know, what do you do to rest? I definitely need my daily nap. So like literally resting, I, de I definitely need that. It, it's not, my naps aren't long. They're like an hour. And then I just get up and go do something else like basketball. I just go and dribble around. I practice my forms. So like I, I still do everything and train and then like go to like actual practice, like after I do all that. So I still have time for resting and then text people and all that stuff. Uh, good stuff but then i still gotta have that that nap <laughs> that's probably like that's probably my favorite part of the day because that nap right. after school oh i'm telling you it's different i'm telling you <laughs> that hold after on school, to that I, thought never change <laughs> never change i have it's the same easy. schedule pretty much every day it's, it's like, easy to uh it's easy to let go of that rest that that nap that resting part of the day when you become a, a busy person with lots yeah. of things that you think you need to do so how much do you train, Jeff? So I normally train like some after school, I have like football practice and less lifting and stuff like that. And then I like, it depends on the day. Like that's only like Tuesdays and Fridays. And then I have karate practice, which would be like two to, oh, not two to five, but it would be five to seven. And then on other days I'll have basketball practice from like, Sometimes it's as late as nine. So I'm on, that's only on like Fridays, but I still have to manage and remember my schedule, like what day it is. That's the, that's probably the only reason I remember what day it is just because I have practices that day. Sometimes I have multiple practices a day, like our football, basketball, karate, yeah. basketball, basketball, karate, football. So like, it's all, it's a very hectic schedule, but I'm pretty much used to it by now. So. And then of course you're, you're, you're going to high school. So you're training your mind all those hours of the day. Yeah. I, I have time to do all my schoolwork in school because I have a study hall. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty much good on schoolwork. And so you, you, you got your, you really value active rest. You're spending a lot of time training and you're actually only in competition, some small part of the, of the equation. Yeah. We don't have that many uh, martial arts tournaments. I, I, I love talking to you and really thinking about how you're spending your time. Cause you're sitting there saying, oh, well, <laughs> I've got all these awards. I only win first place when yeah. you are fighting, when you are competing, but the rest of the time you're training Yeah, that you're training your body, you're training your mind. I think that's a good takeaway for, for those of us who are out in the, in the business world or are trying to manage personal lives that are super complex right now is that we've got to take the time to train and rest. Yeah. You, you can't you always be fighting. Good. You won't be able to perform good in like a, a game situation if you're not practicing those game situations outside of when no one's looking. So like pay for basketball, for instance, if you're not shooting any shots outside of outside of uh, the game, then you're not going to do any good. So you always got to keep training. If, if you want to learn some new martial arts moves, you can't just learn it during the, the match. You have to teach right. yourself and learn the techniques outside and practice them. I love it. I, I, I love I, I love your energy, Jeff. Thank so you. 
if people want to connect with um with you uh you're saying that they can a direct message you or instant message you on on instagram yes i answer my uh, dms DMs. and okay, they great. can email me it's still also goldenagekarate at gmail.com so okay. like, everything i have that you can message me on is golden age karate so just <laughs> just search that up and you'll find it it's free okay <laughs> And we will put um, all the contacts for Jeff in the show notes so you can find those there. So Jeff, do you have a, a few favorite quotes? I bet you you're a, a man that remembers a few odd pieces of inspiration once in a while. Um, let's see. Uh, hard work doesn't, or hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. That's probably my favorite one. <laughs> now wait, go through that again for me. Hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. Uh, that, I'm trying to remember one of my uh, the Kobe ones, but it's like it's, it's very long. <laughs> if I saw it, I would definitely remember it. Okay, but, well, if you think of it, you can send it to Brittany, and we'll put that one in the show notes because I'm sure it'll be it'll be inspiring. Yeah, I'll def I definitely will remember it right after this. <laughs> so, um, I always like to ask my guests near the end of our interviews. You know, uh, um. The conspiracy of goodness is, is this movement that we're pointing to at ever widening circles. It's this enormous wave of goodness and progress happening in the world that almost no one knows about. And you're part of it, I'm part of it. Most of the people that would listen to this podcast are part of it. Um, it's just not getting any light shining on it because of the overwhelming negativity in our online lives. So our byline underneath ever widening circles is, it is still an amazing world. What proves to you that it's still an amazing world? Give me something that always reminds you that it is still an amazing world, no matter what you hear on the news. So what gives that to me is when I'm just like walking outside and I see somebody, like one of my friends, like if I see them like out mowing someone else's lawn, like, I just like, huh, they're still still good in the world because I know they don't live there. So like, I'm assuming they're doing something for them. Or when my, one of my friends, he asked me to go, uh, when it was, it snows bad here. So like, he asked me, hey, let's go sell some snow. I was like, oh, it's still good in the world. So like, my, some of my friends are like great examples of it. Yeah. Oh, that is, that is a great way to, to wrap up today's interview. I am so delighted that we got to talk, Jeff. Thank and you um, we'll make sure to connect as many people as we can to your to your work and aspirations. Definitely. Thank you. So please, um, please check out the show notes for anything that Jeffrey and I talked about today. Hey, thanks for listening to this terrific conversation I had with Jeffrey. Well, I'm telling you, when I meet young people like this, I know the future is going to be safe with them. Let's not allow the negative news cycle, the craziness on social media to color our perspective about young people. They have the most invested in our future. And while we may only be hearing about the troubled young people in the world, and maybe, and maybe the troubled ones are the first to rise to the top of social media, but that's not the norm. What we're seeing in the news and social media is only a slice of reality. And if you'd like a more balanced news diet, if you'd like to see a more, um, a more helpful way forward that includes stories, real stories, people like Jeffrey, old and young, um, innovators, uh, people who are solving some of the world's most vexing problems, then join us on the Goodness Exchange every week for a great conversation with someone who can restore your faith in humanity. I want to see you walk with a spring in your step like I do every day. And I can guarantee you the only reason I have such a, a great attitude about the future is because I know so much about what's possible from all this goodness and progress that we're curating at the Goodness Exchange. Join us and you can help make that version of the future rise to the top. <laughs>